day three here at IMTS and still lots to see. First thing this morning is to watch a test pilot fly a jet pack around with a jet on his arms and on his back. After that, I'm gonna go pretty slow for the booths. I have a few meetups planned. There's a big Instagram meetup planned at the current booth at three o'clock, and it's gonna be a pretty chill day at the show. I'm here in the Meltio booth where the Philips additive division has put a laser head on the Haas UMC. So it's pretty slick the way that they can machine a part, weld on the part, machine it up, and then weld on it again. Tell me a little bit about the machine. Right, so we have a uh, laser process with six lasers, and then we're using uh, standard welding wire is our feedstock, so we don't have issues with uh, powder that you'd normally have. The powder-based system, you have to worry about material changeover, there's a lot of waste material, there's also health risks, being a special respirator. Yeah. So uh, using commercial welding wire, we're able to uh, use uh, more cost-effective material, we get a lot more material utilization, we're well over 90%, we're not wasting as much. And then uh, material changeover takes five minutes just to change from one wire to another. That's pretty slick. It'd be hard to make a part like that out in the field. So we take a piece of stock and just start welding and build it up like this. Because they have a five axis, they can rotate the part and end up, how long does it take to make that part? So the cycle time for this is three hours and 20 minutes. Most of that is the additive portion. Uh, but we're able to alternate between machining and additive uh, on the fly. That's pretty slick. Thanks. If you're looking for a place to eat, I'd recommend the West Food Court. The food is really good here and you can get a salad bar or a number of other things. In the pavilion around the West Building is packed full of new manufacturers of 3D printers. Everybody who makes a 3D printer is here showing off the different materials that they're using and the different ways they're building parts. This is very impressive and the new technology. If you're wondering what does the tool change on a side mount tool changer, this is how the cam box works. And here they're showing a rebuilt one and an older one, but is that bad news, showing that they need to be rebuilt? Hard to say, this machine probably has half a million tool changes. I had to chuckle when I saw this picture. Does it mean he's showing somebody how to do it? Or do you think he doesn't know how to do it and he's trying to get some help? Either way, it made me laugh. I'm all about training, so let's teach everybody what to do. This, this Matt Thurow right here was probably built in the, in the mid to late 70s, and I've worked on machines just like that. The control is at Fanuc 20 control with stepper motors, which they no longer have made for 30 or 40 years. All right? That's great. Got this 50 taper Kitamura taking a pretty monstrous cut. This machine is a MyCenter HX500IG horizontal with a pallet changer running the Aromatic, which is a Mitsubishi control. This is probably the best machine I have ever seen run a ball bar. The Mitsubishi control is really incredible. I'm here at Momentum Tools booth and they have a very large scale VTL. The coolest part about this machine is that the covers are off 
and you can see the spindle, the worm gear. You can see all around the chuck, the head. That's the rack gear for the axis to move up and down. You've got the boxways exposed, the ball screw. This thing is running a fanic control and it even has an automatic tool changer. The 90 degree head that's in it is pretty impressive because it means it has a live head and it may or may not be able to change tools with that head. You can see the spindle motor up there, the leveling screws, the casting. That's probably a lifting point right there. This is an impressive large machine. Probably has a spindle chiller, a column cooler. That's probably the coolant tank, the hydraulic tank. And if your machine requires a ladder, it is a big machine. I made it to the Instagram machinist meetup a little late. It's quite a crowd here. You know you're at an Instagram machinist meetup when everybody's exchanging stickers and just hanging out, telling stories. Lots of fun here.